Okay, so we're going to start looking at 2014 question 8 higher level, which was marginal costing and absorption costing. And on the question, you're given some details about Murphy Limited and uh, selling 16,000 units and the various sales and cost figures. And you're asked, first of all, to calculate the company's break even point and margin of safety. So, just to set that out, uh, your marginal costing statement. has to be done and then you can get the various uh, uh, units that you need for your break even and your margin of safety. So margin costing statement starts up with sales and here we know we have 16,000 units and the sales figure is given us 480,000 and I'm just putting in a per unit column here at the end which uh, I can get the unit values for each of these so 480,000 divided by 16 tells me that each unit is being sold for 30 euros so then you take out the variable costs and again there's uh, some notes up with the materials are given at 120,000 the um, wages, direct wages are 110,000 and your overheads we're told that one third of the 60,000 is variable so one third of that then for something is 20,000 and we also have to put in some administration overheads there and we're told that there's 105 in total but 65 of that is fixed so therefore the balance on that is uh, 40,000 as administration overhead in our variable costs so those are our variable costs it totals at 290,000 and again, if I'm taking that out of my sales, it gives me back a contribution of 190,000. So that's my contribution. And again, I'm going to get a per unit value for the variable cost. So 290 divided by 16 gives me per unit cost to 18125. And the contribution per unit is 190 divided by 16 is 11,875. So those are the values I need later on for my break even. Because I'm going to keep going with my fixed costs and I have basically the factory overheads. Uh, it was 60 of 20 of it used in variable, that's 40,000 here and the administration there's total of 105 and 65 that is here so those figures were given so that's 105 there in fixed costs so taking that out then I have 85,000 in profit and that allows me then to do the break even and the break even point is equal to your fixed costs over the contribution per unit. So the fixed costs here at 105. And putting that over the contribution per unit, which I calculated there is 11,875, 11.875. So dividing that then, it tells me that I need to make and sell 8,843 units in order to break even. And therefore, I can get my margin of safety and the margin of safety is equal to your sales minus your break even. So in other words, it's equal to, and again it's in units, it's 16,000 units minus the break even units of 8843 and that works out at 7157 units. So that's my margin of safety in units. So that's part A. 
So the next part of the question requires you to roughly sketch a graph showing your break-even point. So again, I'm just going to get a ruler, and you don't have to be too exact about it, but you want it neat at the same time. So I'm just going to roll this up. On the x-axis then you want to show the, the output or the units and on the y-axis you want to show the, uh, the costs and and the revenue stream. So again, just in terms of the uh, points that you want to use, the break even was at 8,843 units. So I want that somewhere there in the middle. I'm just gonna to space this out at So roughly here is my break even in units. And I'm going to mark that at 8843. And again, then I'm going to go for the uh, the revenue uh, from that. And uh, if we look at the multiplier, so if I take my 8,843 units and we're selling those at uh, 30 each and we found that in our part A. So 8843 by 30 will come to 265,290. That's the figure that you have to get. So that's our sales figure in order to break even. So again, just to scale that up, and you have lines in your copy, you can uh, go up along each line and otherwise you can wheel it up. And I'm just roughly going uh, in two hundreds so so two hundred sixty five thousand two hundred and ninety is somewhere there. So again just get your ruler and mark it out. So I'm taking my break-even point as there. And a couple of other points then, you want to get your fixed costs uh, set as well. So the fixed costs we found in the first part were a total of 105. So I went up in 25s here if you like. So three, four, we'll say there's 100,000. So, a hundred and five thousand it's just above that somewhere here and again it doesn't have to be too accurate um, so I'm just going to write in the value of the fixed cost a hundred and five thousand was my fixed cost value so that we know that now the fixed costs uh, from your marker you just go across in a straight line so straight across your breath and you label that then as your fixed costs. Okay. And the two other lines we have to put in then, we have to put in our total revenues and our total costs. So both of these lines will go through 
the break even point. So my total revenues, revenues will always start at zero. So if you don't make any sales, you, you won't sell any units, uh, both will start at zero. So I have to go from here to the break even point for my revenue line. Okay, so I map that up along. So this is revenue. And I'm just going to mark that there or label that as break even. Okay. And the uh, costs line then total costs will start with your fixed costs here so if I don't make any sales so I'm at zero units I will still have a fixed cost to pay so your starting point for your cost line is on the beginning of the fixed cost line so your total costs start there and they follow the through the break even point as well so I'm going from here through the break even so just make sure they cross there and graph it through. I'm just going to extend it a little bit further along there so that I can label it. So this is my total cost. Okay. And uh, that's the break even point. I should just Even point is there. So that's your chart then and again um, just to label the chart it's going to break even chart. Okay so I'm going to go on to part three of our 2014 question and part three asks me to calculate the profit the company would make if it reduced its selling price, price by 5%, increased advertising by 5,000, and thereby increased sales to 19,000 units, but all other cost levels and percentages remaining the same. So you simply go through your margin costing uh, workings again. So your sales will be 19,000 this time, and we're multiplying by a selling price that's minus 5%. Now the previous selling price was 30, so we're going to minus 5% from that. So again, you can do that in your calculator and it should work out at uh, 28.50. So 19,000 by 28.50. I'll just write that there so that you have it equals your sales of 541,500. And then you're told that your variable costs uh, again there's nothing there um, in variable costs change so it's nineteen thousand again and your variable costs per unit are eighteen point one two five. We had that from the first part, so nothing there is changing. So it's just the quantity, so that works out at 344375. And your fixed costs then, we do have a change in the fixed costs. So I'm just going to tell you that first of all, that's 197125. And then your fixed costs. And your fixed costs, you're told, are increasing by 5,000. Just check that. Um, increase advertising by five thousand. That's your fixed cost. So it was at one hundred five, and we're adding on five thousand there. So we're at one hundred and ten thousand in fixed cost. So we simply add those on. So you're taking out your fixed cost then to give you a profit of eighty-seven thousand one hundred and twenty-five. So that's your profit. Okay.
so part four of this question asks us to calculate the number of units that must be sold at 26 euros per unit to provide a profit of 20% of the sales revenue received from the same units. So we can use our formula for this and the formula would be fixed costs and that's over the contribution per unit minus and it's minus the 20% of the sale price. So if we fill that in we have 105 and again you're going back to the base figures that you had at the first part all the time and the contribution in that per unit was 7 uh, 0.875 and we're getting 20% of the selling price and again 20% of the selling price here is 26 so 20% probably 26 and that works out at 5.2 and therefore your units to be sold will be 39,253 units. So just to explain where that CPU per unit came from there, our CPU is our selling price minus our variable costs per unit. So our selling price per unit for part four is 26 euros that was given in the question minus the variable cost per unit that we had in part A so minus the 18.125 gives us 7.875 as our variable costs, our CPU I should say uh, for this piece so 7.875 can slot in there and minus your profit and that's all divided into your fixed cost to give you the number of units So now we're going to look at part five of that question and it asks for the profit the company would make if a commission of 5% of sales is given to sales personnel and one euro extra per unit spent on packaging, thereby increasing the sales to 17,000 units at 34 euros per unit. So again, you just set out what you know. So we have sales, which will be 17,000 and they're now multiplied by 34 euros per unit so that comes to three uh, sorry 578,000 and the variable costs so we're minusing the variable costs and that is 17,000 and it's multiplied by the 18.125 that we had already. But onto that variable cost, we also have now the um, commission and there's also an extra euro per unit on packaging. So in actual fact then, the variable cost per unit, uh, we have the commission and that is, I'm just going to do a little working on that first of all, commission is 34 euros that we're selling them at, our sale price, and it's multiplied by 5%. So that's going to work out at 1.70, so we need to add that in there to our variable costs. And we're also adding on an extra euro per unit for advertising. So the 17,000 is now multiplied by new variable cost there of 20.825. So when you multiply that up, you will get 354,000 and 25. So taking that out then will give me a new contribution. So that's my contribution and I still have to take out my fixed costs and again they haven't changed 
There's nothing in the question, just check it there. There's nothing else to change, so that's minus the fixed costs. That's the same as before to give us our profit. Okay. So part B of this question uh, is a different company, so it's a different section. Barry Limited produces 10,000 units of product day during the year. 9,000 of these units were sold at four euros each and the production costs were as follows. So you're given production costs and you're asked to prepare a profit and loss statement under marginal costing and absorption costing principles for Barry. So two statements there and then a little bit of theory to outline the difference between the two. So if we take the absorption costing first, so we'll have sales, and our sales, it said, was 9,000, and it's at 4 euros each, so that works out at 36,000, and then we have Uh, minus our costs, and we have our direct materials. So we didn't have any opening costs under here. The direct materials were, and again, it's all based on 10,000 units. So direct materials are 10,000 by the 0 0.6. Oh, 60 cent there per unit so that works out at 6,000 so we're costing for the full quantity that we produced not just what we sold so direct labor so again 10,000 there and the rate for the labor is 0 0.50 so that works out at 5,000 and we also have variable overheads And variable overheads are again 10,000 and this time it's at 40 cents so that's 4,000 there. So the variable overheads and finally we have fixed overheads and remember in absorption costing we uh, include the fixed overheads in our costing so that 4,000 goes directly in there. So that comes to a total of 19. And then minus your closing stock. And we made 10,000 units. We've sold 9,000, so therefore we have 1,000 units left in quantity. And we're close. Uh, Pricing those at the cost or the NRV, so the cost is lower than NRV. So cost here is nineteen thousand um, per for that's our cost for ten thousand units. So for a thousand units, it's going to be one tenth of that. So. In other words, we have 1,000 of our 10,000, or one-tenth of 19,000 left, and that works out, obviously, at 1,900. So if we take out our closing stock, then we get our cost of sales at 17,100, and if we take that out, then we get our profits at 18,900. So that's our profit figure. Now, if I was to do marginal costing, so the marginal costing then is sales again, 9,000 by 4 is 36, less the costs, you've direct labour at 5, direct materials at 6, variable overheads at 4, and you don't include the fixed overheads that we had before. So you're subtotaling then at 15. And then minus your closing stock. So your closing stock, again, in this instance, 
is a thousand in quantity and that's of a total of ten thousand and the ten thousand were costed at fifteen so the value of your closing stock is one tenth of that fifteen thousand so one thousand five hundred in other words so minus your closing stock there leaves you with a cost of sales of 13,500 and when you take that out then you're left with your contribution. So your contribution in this instance then is 22,500. And then you take out your fixed costs. And fixed costs in this instance then were um, your 4,000 that was given. So that leaves you with 18,500 in profits. So slightly different there for you uh, put in your fixed overheads in your costing for absorption whereas in marginal costing you don't include fixed overheads and therefore you get the contribution first then subtract your fixed costs to give you profit so slight difference in profit figures 18,900 versus 18,500 so part b part two it's a little bit of theory based on what we've done in the first piece there and it's to outline the difference between marginal and absorption costing and then indicate with which method should be used for financial accounting purposes and why. So basically the difference between marginal and absorption costing based on what we've just done, absorption costing included fixed overheads and therefore the cost is higher at 19,000 and the closing stock value is also higher than at um, one tenth of that, 1,900, and therefore the profits were higher at 18,900. And marginal costing, then uh, you don't include the fixed costs in your costings, and this leaves costs lower than absorption costing. So our costs in marginal were 15,000, and our closing stock then was valued lower at 1,500, and profits were lower then at 18,500. So finally, then which method should be used? And the answer to that is absorption costing should be used because it agrees with standard accounting practice and conventions and matches the costs with the revenues uh, when they occur.